Uh, and good afternoon. I'm Dylan Anchetta in the H&N Digital Center. Thanks for joining us here on this breaking news special stream. We've been following several big stories all this morning, one of them regarding airlines and a technology or internet outage that is delaying flights statewide. But first, we want to get to the latest situation out on Oahu's North Shore, where a hostage situation has ended. Uh, our Jelani Martinez joins us now live there outside of the Dillingham Polo Fields. Aloha Jelani, what can you tell us so far? Farrington Highway has reopened and we're now outside of the Hawaii Polo Field in Waialua and we're going to zoom in to show you that Honolulu Police's Specialized Services Department is still out here investigating. We got here around 1145 and there were police officers still arriving in unmarked cars. Honolulu Fire Department and Emergency Medical Services were also here. We spoke with people who were waiting back outside to pass through since 1030 this morning and they've seen between 50 to 75 officers arrive here. Now, one witness who was running along Farrington Highway recalls seeing the police chase and a white pickup truck pulling into the polo field. Another witness was on the beach when she heard two gunshots and was told to evacuate the area. And just before 1215, we heard about six gunshots. Now, multiple sources tell us the suspect was shot and killed. Thank you so much, Jolani. Now, we also understand that you did speak to some of those witnesses a short time ago. Tell us a little bit about what they said. I will say that they were overwhelmed with seeing the amount of Honolulu police officers out here on the North Shore. Um, they did recall the witness that I mentioned um, who was evacuated from the beach did recall hearing one gunshot and then hearing another gunshot a few moments later. The other witness who was running down Farrington Highway um, saw the pickup truck pull into Polo Field and saw there were two police officers right behind him. But again, these witnesses saw about 50 to 75 officers out here. Um, some were in plain clothes and some were also armed and had their vests on. Thank you so much, Jolani. And I understand we also have that sound bite. I'm going to go ahead and play that out for our viewers right now. This is some of that, uh, the part of that interview that Jolani just mentioned. We were, we decided to, you know, cool off in the ocean for a minute and we heard one gunshot go off. We were then informed that it was a hostage situation and that someone may have been hit. Um, and at that point, uh, we decided that it was, um, you know, safer to kind of move off to the side. At that point, we did hear, I think, at least one more gunshot. Um, and it was at that moment that we decided we needed to kind of get to safety. We heard one gunshot and we were told there was a hostage situation. So my first thought was that maybe someone was hit and it was a very scary feeling, as you can imagine. He was outside of the car. Um, he was uh, positioning over the door. Um, and it was at the time when he was kind of repositioning in different areas and letting off shots. That's when we decided we really needed to get somewhere more safe. You know, at first it was, uh, I think we were a little shell shocked. Um, like I said, we didn't really think, we thought maybe it was, you know, a, you know, something kind of smaller, but as it unfolded, we, we learned that it was something a little more serious. Definitely a tense situation out there. Now, Jelani, you've been there for several hours now and you've seen this unfold uh, from when the roads were blocked all the way until now. Can you tell us what is the atmosphere like and how many authorities remain on scene? Again, uh, we saw dozens of. I just want to give you a layout of just how far the closure was. So it was about a quarter mile away from the Hawaii Polo Field, and there they had an officer um, blocking off the area. Now, um, as I mentioned, at around 12:15, we heard about six gunshots, and that's when we saw Honolulu Fire Department and EMS moving into the Polo Field, and. Um, you know, one of the witnesses we spoke to described it as, as rapid fire. She heard rapid fire. Another witness says it sounded like crossfire. But we all we will be speaking with um, Honolulu police soon, and uh, we'll be giving you updates as they continue to investigate. 
Jelani, one more question for you. Uh, we do know that Farrington Highway was closed in the area for quite some time, and the road where this happened uh, is near a popular beach. It, it's on the way to the Dillingham Airfield. Uh, can you tell us what was the traffic like getting in there? Uh, it is a one way in and out kind of deal. So for those people that were there on the other side of the blockade, uh, were they told to basically just hang tight, stay in place, or have they been able to head out now? What's that like? So some people actually chose to sit and wait for about three hours until the road reopened. Others decided to turn around and the beach actually near here, the public access beach was actually open. So there were still people who parked on the side and went to the beach instead. But I will say there were about a dozen cars that were willing to wait for Farrington Highway to reopen and head toward Mokulei'i side. Well, our Jelani Martinez out there on Oahu's North Shore, we thank you so much for joining us here on this extended stream, uh, giving us the latest information uh, that we know. Once again, to recap, police have fatally shot and killed the suspect, and we do know that the hostage in that situation is reported to be safe. So, uh, Jelani Martinez, thank you so much again for joining us here on this extended stream.